comments. In this video, I will be addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the possession of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here, so keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. First comment comes from Yadon Yashar. And they say, the earth is a terraneous landmass contained within a compass of water with the Antarctic as it is, it's, I think they mean the it's without the apostrophe, wide-brimmed perimeter. Now, this is in response to a live stream that I did where, I think, I, oh yeah, it was Cognitive Conjecture edition of the live stream where I, start, I was talking about conspiracy theories and different things that people like to argue about on the internet. The shape of the earth being one of them. And this individual seems convinced of something because they're speaking as if they know what they're saying for sure. So they say the earth is a terraneous landmass. Well, can't argue with that. Contained within a compass of water. Well, in certain contexts, I guess if you look at earth and you look at the land masses, either land masses surround the water or the water surrounds the land mass i guess it depends upon your perspective right with the antarctic as its wide brimmed perimeter or perimeter now that's something that really can't be proven can it by first-hand knowledge that's something you kind of have to take on assumption or presumption or belief if that's what you believe i don't participate with that as a fact, simply because I can't prove it. I don't know that. You know, I mean, so that's why if someone would, if I would have a conversation with someone like this um, out in the world or whatever, and they said something like that, I would ask them for proof. Well, what's your proof of that? Now, I'd like to see it. Show me. Show me. I can show you that the earth is a continuing landmass. We can walk out on my porch get some binoculars, and we can see that it's a landmass that continues. But as far as seeing Antarctic as a perimeter, can't really see that. And again, bringing back to what I said at the beginning here, depending upon your perspective, the land either surrounds the water or the water surrounds the land. And you'd have to say, I mean, if you ever a passenger aboard an Airbus, an airliner, and you flew overseas or things like that, or flew in a continuous straight line, if you knew that you were flying in a continuous straight line, if you're pilots out there, tell me, is there more water or more land? Now, I have spoken with a few pilots, and I can tell you that the pilots I've spoken with do not participate with Earth as a spinning ball. Just saying. The pilots that I've spoken with, which less than a handful. But anyways, it's just interesting. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Mandy Lowry, and they say, when we have to sign, for example, to buy a property, should we autograph or sign, please? Am new to this thing. Thank you. 
Well, if you are using, if you are a live life claimant and you are using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, of course you would autograph that document contract postal vessel court venue. The thing with correct sentence structure contract is if it's to be correct contract, all the participants of that contract, all the contract parties must be live life claimants. And they must have at least a basic cognition of quantum grammar. So if you are talking about a fiction property transaction, I mean, you can autograph it if you want to. That's entirely up to you. But that's not going to make that contract any less a fiction instrument. If you have an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble document, and then you decide to punctuate and autograph your name at the bottom, that just means you autographed and used correct sentence structure for your name, but that doesn't make the rest of the document correct. You see what I'm saying? So it really doesn't matter what you do at the bottom of that document. Now, volition is the most important thing of any contract. So if you're using what the common law folks would say is good faith, or as I would say, the balance of the honor and the grace. We contract every day using fiction babble. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm speaking, literally speaking, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction babble. It's what we've all been taught. And as long as we're all here to be understood and not misunderstood, and there's a trust level there, you can scribble your signature or whatever, however you want to write your name on that contract. It means that you're going to perform on that contract. And then the other contract parties also agree, and then they're going to perform on that contract. But you have to vet the other contract parties first. But you can contract in fiction. There's really nothing inherently wrong with that. The only time the problem arises is when one or more of the other contract parties in that agreement decide to try and unlevel the geometric level playing field. They try to get an advantage, they try and screw you over, rip you off, or they don't perform on their end. That's when correct sentence structure comes in, and that's when you would come in and commandeer the vessel and, you know, tow it as a salvage and uh, use correct sentence structure to stop any further damages or shipwrecks. But you have to learn the grammar first is the main thing. And if you would learn the grammar, uh, you you would be able to answer this question yourself and you wouldn't have to listen to me go on and on about it in a comments video. So if you're interested in learning, if you're serious about learning correct sentence structure, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a correct grammar workshop. Please include your full correct name. Next comment comes from Shami Yasharo and they say, Un, un, hold up. Some parts of this video don't seem to match up with the now space continuum. What kind of time machine did you oite? Now, I wasn't sure what they meant by that, but uh, later on they explained to me that they were talking about the parts of the video that I had sped up to, I think, eight times the normal speed. Usually when I'm writing on the dry erase board back here, I'll show myself writing something out, but I'll speed it up. Because, you know, in consideration for the uh, short attention span theater folks out there of this modern generation. This is the first of an interesting series of comments from Trenton Allen, whom I know, I feel like they mean well. I appreciate the sentiments that they uh, share. However, I don't think they've ever read the terms and conditions of the comments field or else they would not be commenting the way they're saying. I mean, it sounds like a broken record. I know I do, folks. I know you're probably tired of hearing me say that. And if you're tired of hearing me say that, why don't you read the terms and conditions of the comments field? It's that simple. I'm trying to teach people to learn to honor the rules of the vessel that they are a guest of. It's like someone coming to your house. There are rules. There are terms and conditions. This comments field is no different. 
and the rules are posted. So I'd appreciate reading them. That that would be that'd be good. So let's begin here. Uh, they say brother. Again, as far as I know, I mean I don't know Trent and Allen at all. I know what they mean by brother. They mean probably in a general sense. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm not related to them. Russell, Mark, Stephen. I know who Russell is. I know who Mark is. I'm guessing Mark lowercase k, but I don't know who Stephen is. Those gentlemen are out for profit. Gentlemen is an assumption. You are beyond their scope. You are giving them life. Uh, that is not correct. As far as I know, probably their parents are the ones that gave them, well, facilitated their gift of life. As to what exactly gave them the gift of life, I don't really know. But I'm definitely not doing that. I don't have that capacity. To all the followers of Chief Russell, we appreciate your opinion. Now back to correct sentence structure. He dissed David Wynn Miller and lost all credibility. Rewatch the old videos and watch Russell scheming on Dave. Now it is noticeable. Well, I don't know how long you've been watching these videos, Trenton. I first began watching in 2017. And uh, at the end of 2017, in the fall of 2017, is when Russell first began coming out in public, speaking out against David Wynn Miller, challenging him. In various ways and then in the following year 2018 at the end of 2017 and then the beginning of 2018 before uh, David passed they were actually I mean Russell was actually uh, based yeah bad-mouthing him and then after David passed that's when Russell began his campaign to basically discredit David Wynn Miller. Um, you say now it is noticeable. Um, I have to guess that you're speaking for yourself, Trenton, because I noticed it right off the bat. And I had many questions about it, and I've gotten answers to those questions. And I'm continuing to share my knowledge and uh, my closure on the pitfalls that are uh, in the path of anyone who chooses to contract with Russell or Mark, uh, the people you mentioned there. Again, I don't know who Stephen is, so maybe you could give some clarity to that. Another one from Trenton, and they say, 900 plus videos of knowledge, people, viewers, how much more does a master have to do? Jason is so, so humble and patient. Trenton's glazing me up here. All I'm really saying is if you don't work, then you don't eat. Get closure on the knowledge given you were not bamboozled. You lazy. Hmm. I wonder if they're speaking in reference to Spencer David Miller Field. Because I don't remember what I said in this particular comments video here. Uh, I appreciate the sentiment. Um, <laughs> again, as I say, I don't come out in the public and say that I'm humble. I don't make claims like that. Uh, I, you know, it's up to other people as to whether they think that I'm humble or not. I try to cultivate humility, but it's not up to me to say whether I am humble or not. Goodness gracious. Another one from Trenton, and they say, you got that baby face now. I think uh, they're talking about the fact that I shaved. Interesting thing to comment on. Uh, okay. Anyways, I think that you should copyright this format or responding to comments with content you've given so much innocently. Corporations watch you with intent of profit, not closure. I hope you get paid. You made that specific format popular. Now, this one's a little more confusing to me. I'm not sure what they're trying to convey here. Uh, I'm just going to make some guesses where they say that I should copyright this format. Uh, 
Again, going back to the terms and conditions, I specifically ask people not to tell other people what they should or shouldn't do. That is a trespass. That is an assumption. When you sit there and tell someone else, a total stranger in this case, you should do this. That's a trespass and low-key condescending because now you're saying that you think you know what's best for someone else's life. And I'm not picking on Trenton. I'm saying this in a general sense, in a knowledge cultivation sense, having to do with psychology, the grammar. With correct sentence structure, you would never tell someone what they should or shouldn't do. It's not part of it. You only make a claim for yourself. That's it. Unless, of course, someone gives you consent to make a claim for them. That's different. But there is no consent here, especially in a comments field, for anyone to tell anyone else what they should or shouldn't do. As a matter of fact, in the terms and conditions, the rules, the community guidelines of this YouTube channel, I specifically tell people not to tell other people what they should or shouldn't do. And yet here we are. Um, so, in, in cooling on it to that, why would I compromise? Why would I copyright the format? I don't have the volition to own anything other than my correct name. Um, because that's what I use to stop the trespass of the fiction system. But like the whole idea of owning land or copywriting a, a technology or, or anything like that in the correct sentence structure domain is repugnant to me. I can be a steward of it, I can use it, but I think everyone else ought to be able to use it as well. Those that are knowledgeable enough to use it. Anyone who tries to bottleneck it, classify it, hide it, or make it basically a pay-to-play thing, I don't agree with that at all. That's why I don't agree with people that charge money for live life claims. It's a racket, it's a scam, and those live life claims are not correct, by the way. Grammatically, they are not correct. And also with the witnessing mechanics, they're not correct either. There's just a whole mess of wrong going on with people that charge money for live life claims. But I digress. Anyways, uh, corporations watch you with intent of profit, not closure. And yeah, I mean, I'm aware of that. I've been approached by everybody from the Purple Thumb community to other people that want to hire me to be their quantum grammar guru, you know, for a group of people, to the Freemasons, to everybody else that uh, want to try and get a piece of this. But my prerequisite to that is learn the grammar. If you're here to learn the grammar, I'm here for you. If you're here for anything other than the grammar, das badanya. And another one from Trenton, and they say, much respect, brother. Factual God equals a ship's captain after 12 miles out to sea. The 13 milestones, millstones, milestones. The captain has lawful right to assert his power in any way, even executions, LOL, walk the plank. But a pirate captain can always be elected out. Book of Maritime Stories lies. B. Lie. V. Okay. The only thing I'll comment as far as that goes is... Uh, where it says the captain has lawful right. Lawful is a fiction term in my eyes. I don't participate with lawful anything. Uh, take the L away from lawful, what do you got? L awful. <laughs> so laws and legalities, that's for the fiction system participants and believers. I understand the point behind it, the original perhaps volition behind creating those things. But as far as what I do with correct sentence structure, I participate with three principles. Rule one, rule equal, honor and grace, peace, neutrality. That's all that's needed for me. As long as those things are adhered to, everything else falls into place. 
And then Trenton says, I agree exactly. Where are the contracts of agreement? Side note, David Wynn Miller would be proud of you. I am. What does that, folks, what does that mean? When someone says they're proud of you, usually that has to do with like a parent or someone who has some sort of uh, personal relationship or feels they have some sort of personal relationship for you. They say, I'm proud of you. Who is this Trenton? <laughs> I love your diligence and I see your passion. One question, why are compound words just a correct sentence, structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar? I see a forgetful neglect of the syntax of those spells. Um, I think they're referring to separating syllables, perhaps. And again, Trenton really shows no closure on this grammar. They show no, not even a rudimentary closure on it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asking a question like that. If you have a correct sentence structure dictionary, which I highly doubt Trenton does, at least one that he authored, I doubt that he does, you would know that if you are going to hyphenate compound facts, each particle, each hyphenated particle would have to have its own finite mean in the dictionary. So, for example, the way that they hyphenated communication, they would have to have a, a finite mean for COM. They'd have to have a finite mean for MUN. They'd have to have a finite mean for I. They'd have to have a finite mean for CA. And they'd have to have a finite mean for TION. And then they would have to have a finite mean for communication, the whole thing. But I definitely don't see any, you know, not even a rudimentary closure of correct sentence structure. So I'm not sure what they're trying to convey here. In order to give counsel with correct sentence structure, you'd first have to have a position. But they're not giving counsel here. I realize they're, they're supposedly giving a question. They say one question, but I don't see a question mark here. So it's not really even a question. It's actually a judgment because they say, I see a forgetful neglect of the syntax, which is an assumption, assuming that myself and everyone else who uses correct sentence structure has forgotten to hyphenate those words, which is 100% incorrect assumption, presumption. If you're going to tell other people what they're doing, you better be being correct yourself. Otherwise, you don't have a position. Another comment from Trent and Allen, they say, look up the village of Sati, you will see where they get satin, vampire, executives, etc. They say acting like two people of Sati makes you satin, or acting as Sati villager, respect closure. So they said to look up the village of Sati, which I had. Quotation, the, space, village, space, of, space, sati, quotation. I've written out exactly what they said. Let's look at the first result. Nothing. Let's look at the second result. Group plants, meat, dairy products. Nothing. Okay, that's the same one as the first. Okay, how about this one? The fourth result. Indian Rebellion of 1857. What does this have to do with Sati?
Kanpur. I don't see anything to do with Sati, and this is the fourth result down on the Google search. So Trenton, I have looked up the village of Sati, looked at the first four results, and there is nothing there to certify what you're saying about these things here. So, it is what it is. Goodness gracious, Trenton has invested a lot in these comments. I appreciate that uh, participation. Your way, I think they mean Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. You are way, way, way too advanced. Now, Jason, you the man. Stop giving Russell your platform. Again, Trenton telling someone else what they should or shouldn't do. Uh, I have not given Russell my platform. You make him pop. <laughs> well, what is that like? Rice Krispies? Snap, crackle, and pop? Or like a firecracker or what? Keep bringing that fire on the facts of the grammar. Grammar is spelled with an A-R at the end there, by the way. Example, name equals not me or na and me. Oh, oh yeah, I responded to this comment asking them for etymological proof of what they're talking about with the word name. Because that, for me, is not a fact of the grammar. Because I have looked it up in etymology dictionaries and the earliest nativity root meaning of that N-A-M-E is not what they have written there. What they've typed there. So we need a continuance of the evidence. We're going to make claims. Got to bring proof. And we get a comment, the last comment from user-eq4t, whatever. And they say, shut up. Your, again, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E is what they're looking for here. You're on the recurring button. What does that mean? So now you decide to quit, and now you're mad. Who's decided to quit? This is unclear in this comment when I read this comment. Did I decide to quit, or did someone else decide to quit? Not sure. David is not even alive anymore. User EQ, I applaud you for your stunning grasp of the obvious. Bro, you should get an award for how much grasp of the obvious you have. So you have a scammer. Hmm. So by you, I guess they must mean me in this context. And if they're saying David is not even alive anymore, then they must be referencing the name in the title. Spencer hyphen David hyphen Miller uh, colon space field. I assure you, user whoever the hell you are, that Spencer David Miller field is a real person. That is their correct name on their live life claim. Nothing to do with the late colon David Iphone Wynn colon Miller. Uh, Spencer has David and Miller in his name. Now, whether he did that or whether his parents did that, I have no idea. So, <laughs> I guess you can uh, take your rudeness and your little picnic blanket wrap it up and go home like Cartman. Thank you for the entertainment. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one and the easiest one is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option if you want to see new content is to click the join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching click the join button and you will see two tiers of membership if you choose the second tier the loyalist contributor tier and you join that for a monthly support donation you'll get new content fresh content exclusive content not available to the public every month but keep in mind there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study and the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen 
and this is for the serious students only, and apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me, and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation, and you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions, and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you. Thank you.